All right. The first one is Tyson Fury was on something called IFL TV, and he predicts that Floyd Mayweather will knock out Conor McGregor. I'm sorry. Other way around. Conor McGregor will knock <laughs> out Floyd Mayweather in 35 seconds like he did Aldo in 13. Um, the, the problem with that, and I, I, I hope he's right. The problem with that is the reason Aldo got knocked out so fast is because he's a pressure fighter and came forward, which created an opening for Conor to counter and knock him out so quickly. I don't see Floyd doing that early on, which is why Conor's going to win f- rounds early on, which is why I bet all these knuckleheads on this. Um, I, you know, if Conor's going to win, it's going to be in those first few rounds, you know, so uh, it's to me like this isn't ludicrous to me to think that he knocks him out in the first minute or first three, five seconds. Cause it's new for Floyd with the movement. It's Connor there. He's a bigger guy. He hits harder. He's hit, he hits harder, harder than a lot of other guys that he's fought. It's awkward. You know, um, I see. I just, to me, that's not ludicrous to say, don't get me wrong. Tyson Fury is a bit of, he's crazy and he has his uh, demons, but you know, with this whole, whole Floyd thing. And this is what I was telling the Showtime guys with this whole Floyd and, and Connor thing is, be open-minded enough. This is my message to the mainstream media. Be open-minded enough to think that it is a possibility that a guy four years ago, four years ago was cashing welfare checks, is now the biggest draw in combat sports history. In four years, he's done this. In that short amount of time, he's done this. Because I don't live in a world of absolutes. I don't live in a world where I want to see people who uh, have these governors on them. I don't want a car that has a governor on it. I don't, I don't want to live in a world where, ah, that's, that's his max potential. Stay in your lane. There's nothing worse you can stay a human being than stay in your lane. When you force that on people or you call this, oh, this is a money grab. Ah, uh, Connor doesn't, doesn't have the 30 years of experience like Floyd does. He could never win. He can't touch him. He has no chance. All you're doing, and it makes you look like a dumbass, is you don't have the creativity, you don't have the open-mindedness to realize that Connor's a once-in-a-lifetime athlete. Everyone goes, ah, you're, you're a dick ride on Connor McGregor. What are you, from Dublin? Take all that out, man. You don't know boxing. You do not know mixed martial arts. This is for all mainstream media. Don't even get me started on fans. That, that doesn't even matter. But when you critique a guy like Connor McGregor, you have to realize that He's setting ceilings, and he's setting the bar so high, we haven't seen it. So, of course, of course, the easy thing to say is he has no shot. Ah, he hasn't, he hasn't put in his 10,000 hours. He has put in his 10,000 hours. You just don't know what he's done with those 10,000 hours. Ah, Floyd has seen every style. He has in boxing. He has not seen this style, which makes this interesting. Ah, he won't win around. Cool, then, where's your, then let's bet the $100,000. Max Kellerman goes, you know what Max Kellerman said? We don't. We never know in this game he could win, but I wouldn't bet on it. <laughs> That's what I thought. That's the thing. We do not know. But you guys live in this world where you want absolutes. You're talking about a guy who knocked out Eddie Alvarez, who's, who will be a Hall of Famer. You're talking about a guy who murked Jose Aldo, fucking murked the guy, who's one of our best strikers ever, who's put in his 10,000 hours. Eddie Alvarez put in his 10,000 hours. And when people go, ah, but look at the output, look at the comp strike numbers. That makes you look stupid. Our game is not a game of jab and output. Our game is a, is a game of finishing and capitalize on mistakes. And finishes, boxing is not. So there's going to be a higher output. They're, they're in two different lanes. Swimming lanes, but we're both in the goddamn pool. One's doing the bas- breaststroke, one's doing the backstroke. But we're both in the same pool. So the, my, my challenge to all those old heads, and the, that's, you know what? It's not even a challenge. They're so old school, it doesn't matter. Of course this sounds ludicrous. Of course they go, oh, my God, this is just a gimmick. Oh, yeah? It's a gimmick? Then why do you guys cover it every day? If it's such a gimmick, what else you want to talk about? Talk about the M- MVP uh, Russell Westbrook just got? Is that what you want to break down? What sport are you going to talk about right now? You hate on this fight, yet you guys cover it every goddamn day. And people, well, they don't because your numbers are terrible, especially on Fox Sports. Numbers are awful. Because you have uneducated people talking about because they have to. Because producers tell you you have to take this stance. Skip Bayless, take this stance. 
their team. Let's listen to the Big Brown Breakdown, listen to Shab, then dish it to Skip so he can sound educated to do what he's talking about. Hey, Shannon, make sure you take Floyd because this is the easiest route. There has to be you, – you, there are ceilings on this game, man. And unfortunately, Connor breaks those ceilings. Again, he's a once-in-a-lifetime athlete. So is Floyd. But Floyd retired for a reason, a good reason. He's 40. You think his skills, his sharpness, his quickness, all that carries along with when he turned 40? Oh, uh, but what about Bernard Hopkins? Uh, okay, okay, okay. Bernard's not fighting guys like this in his prime. Connor's in his absolute prime. He's the bigger guy. He's the faster guy. Oh, come on, man. How's he faster? Again, you're talking about a guy that comes from the mixed martial art world where the margin of error is so small. You can get finished at any second. In boxing, it's not the same. In boxing, you talk to any big boxer, unless it's really a heavyweight, even a heavyweight, it takes them about six rounds to get going. Take rounds off in MMA. Let me know how it goes. Take one round off. You're fucked. You're either going to get finished or you're, behind, you're big time behind on the cards. Probably a 10-8 card. Spend, spend, the, spend, spend the, uh, what, the five minutes on your back and mount. Let me know how it goes for you. You're probably down 10-8 because you took a round off. We don't have the same luxury as them. You're talking about a guy who, who has passed bigger tests. Oh, bigger tests than Floyd Mayweather? Yes, because Floyd Mayweather is tiny. He has 12 rounds. He can afford to lose rounds. We cannot. Our margin of error is so small. So, so small. Again, he did it in four years. He's setting ceilings that we have not seen before. So why would you limit him now? Because you don't know shit about this fight game. Because you yourself would never risk anything. So you hate on everyone else that does. That's why you do it. That's why you hate on Conor McGregor. It's easier to support Floyd. Of course Floyd is the favorite. He's 49-0. You can argue he's the greatest boxer of all time. That's fine. I'll take that argument. This is not your typical boxing match. You are not fighting a regular dude. You are not fighting some over-the-hill Filipino with one arm. That's not, that is not what's happening right here. And of course every boxer goes, oh, he's not going to touch him. Again, because you guys aren't thinking outside the box. You do not get to Conor McGregor's level by thinking like everyone else. You, you are not successful in life by thinking like everybody else. Open your mind here. That's all I ask anyone who watches fight. Open your fucking mind. And look at the body of work Connor has done in four years. And you go tell that guy that he has no shot. You're crazy, man. You're fucking crazy. Remember, he's all, look how cocky is painting the, the mur- mural on the wall of him knocking Floyd out. That's all to, to get the mind right, man. That's not a cocky move. You visualize it is the first mm-hmm. thing you do, and then you actually do it. That's all that is. But pe- people, this, this is easy, man. This is easy. Oh, Floyd got this. And also for me, hey, tell you, it's hard for me to stick up for a guy regardless what the fuck he does inside the ring who beats women nonstop. That's the other elephant in the room. It's a little tough for me to root for the guy and defend the guy. It's fu- it makes it challenging for me, man. A straight up, I mean, you're talking guys, straight up hits women. It's well documented. I'm not making this up. And then you go to his Instagram, and all it is is strip club. And then, and then a picture of maybe his daughter, be like, uh, good luck this weekend, honey, at whatever fucking bullshit tennis event or whatever she's doing. But strip club, strip club, strip tennis. What the fuck is that? So you can, you can, if you're the mainstream media or you're the person at the party going, ah, this is a circus. This is a shit show. This is a money fight. Are they making money? Yes. But when you say that, know why you're saying it. Why are they making money? Because you have a 40-year-old, the pound-for-pound, best pay-per-view number guy in boxing ever against the pound-for-pound, best in his prime mixed martial artist in the world. That's why they're making money, but that's why this is intriguing. The easy thing to do is write this off. All I'm saying, read before you actually make comments. Educate yourself before you make comments. There's a lot more to it than just going, ah, money fight circus. 
I heard Manny Pacquiao. Ah, oh, this is uh, is this one of your current events. One of Manny Pacquiao, mm-hmm. and we'll get to it. I'm sure Manny Pacquiao going ah, it's, it, he won't touch him. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I promise you, he does better than Manny Pacquiao did. Oh, that's fucking crazy, man. No, it's not crazy. Manny had one fucking arm. He was over the hill. He has no business fighting. He's fighting this weekend on ESPN. Yeah, I don't want to see him fight anymore. I promise you it will be a more entertaining fight than Manny Pacquiao Floyd Mayweather. Quote me on it. Write it down. Tweet it to me. I don't give a fuck. I promise you it will be more entertaining than that. It will be a more competitive fight. That wasn't even a fight. What was? I don't know what that was. And that these guys want to throw shade. Yet Manny Pacquiao was open to fighting. Bob Aaron wanted Conor to fight him. Oscar Del Hoya wanted Conor to fight Canelo. Canelo. And all of a sudden they don't get it. Oh, this is a circus shit show. Weird, because you guys all wanted it. But now it's not happening on yours. You're shitting on it. All I'm saying is open your mind. Just don't be that guy at the party who goes, ah, it's just for money. It's a shit show. Because you're all going to get it. And all you're doing is regurgitating what you see on Instagram or Twitter. Don't be that guy. And for those media members out there, do your own homework. Look into this. Just don't go, oh, one guy has his 10,000 hours, greatest of all time. Other guy has no boxing background. A terrible fight. I got Floyd. Don't be a fucking sheep. Be a zebra. Read some shit, man. Come up with your own conclusion. Then if your own conclusion is still, ah, Floyd's going to get this, that's fine. But you can't say there's absolute no possibility Connor wins this. You can't say that. You lose all credibility when you say that. Are the chances low? Sure. Vegas will tell you that. 